the fall of 98, I had a silicon chip transponder surgically implanted in my left arm, just above the elbow. And with that, the computer in my building at Reading was able to monitor me. Essentially, it knew where I was when I went into a room when I left. Hello, Professor Warwick. Within 10 years, machines will be in our clothing and very close to our bodies, and then they're going to go inside our bodies and travel through our bloodstreams, and they're going to go into our brains and enhance our brains in, in a variety of ways. We'll have billions of nanobots traveling through our bloodstream, going into the capillaries of the brain. We're going to really expand human potential for experience, for intelligence, by this very intimate connection, non-biological intelligence. A new implant will be linking up my nervous system in my left arm via a communicating device to the computer. So there'll be a two-way signaling. Electronic signals on the nervous system will be transmitted to the computer where they'll be stored and at a later time transmitted back down from the computer onto my nervous system. What I see is that the human is being reconfigured in the image of the computer and reconfigured in the image of robot intelligence. The way we ask the question about what is a mind or what is a human is by we try to make an artificial mind or an artificial human. The way we, we address the issues of what is reality is we make a virtual reality. We're trying to answer these questions that have been inherited for thousands of years about what is life, and what is a human, what is reality, by trying to make them. What are humans? What are we? What are we good for? When we look at emotions uh, from an electronic point of view, emotions actually appear on your nervous system. Some of them are very distinct. Anger, shock, literally going, Whoa. Electronic signals appear on your nervous system. Excitement, if you're a, a guy and you're looking at an attractive girl. Pain as well. A whole range of things giving signals that you can transmit to a computer and record and potentially play back to try and create the emotions. And we can look at the possibilities of the memory of the computer, the mathematical capabilities of the computer, essentially being linked directly to the human brain. I think the physical body, even now, is starting to get a little bit in the way. Science always asks what is happening, it frequently asks how it is happening, but it almost never asks what it means. Philosophers will say, uh, oh, you can't be conscious unless you really squirt neurotransmitters. The path between here and there is fraught with danger. This is going to generate a lot of passion, a lot of very strong, hard feelings. I mean, passion to the point like abortion wars where people will fight about this. If we could make a, an intelligent computer, what I would do is I'd ask it, what do we do to save ourselves? What value do you put on unborn lives? What's the ethics of working on something that could lead to the extinction of the species? We will make creations of some sort, whether it's in silicon or chemical or what. We will make some kind of creation that will, of their own accord, arrive at the concept of God. who, in essence, are competing for our very same ecological niche. If machines that are more intelligent than humans appear, then the natural conclusion is that it will be they that actually run things, they that decide what happens to us as humans. We, we're not going to be in a position where we can switch them off or program them or control them. They'll be more intelligent than we are. So intelligent machines possess the power to run the Earth in the future, and humans are included in that. If computers arrive at consciousness, it will be, in my view, the mo most momentous event in human history. If we want people to really be aware of this, we have to tell it as a story.